How's it going, everybody? It's DB. And Kai. And we are DB Kai Gaming. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Ratchet and Clank. In the last episode, we started up the game, got through the tutorial level, met our good buddy Clank, who's going to be very important for this game, and we'll find out soon in this level. Now, in between episodes, we did one very important thing. We fixed the controller. Um, so if you did not watch last episode, you would have missed Kai saying, Well, the controller is inverted. Well, he's very happy to let you know it is no longer inverted. Did you find a vendor? Uh, bomb glove ammo. Pyrotech. So these are your weapons. You're going to get... Sector. So you will get weapons blaster. every... So the blaster is a good weapon to start with. Yeah? Yeah. And then there's the flamethrower. And there's the flamethrower and then the bomb glove. So this is how you're going to be getting weapons throughout the game. Every world has new weapons added to the vendor. Ooh, that's a um, once you have bought the weapon, you will get ammo for it automatically. But anytime you run out, if you can't find an ammo box, you can always come back and purchase ammo from the vendor. Gotcha. Do the weapons change at all in per vendor? Um... So, the weapons will be different weapons every world. But once you've got to a new world, those weapons will stay in the vendor always. Now, in the later games, the weapons actually upgrade and can actually transform into new weapons. But for this game right now, the blaster will always stay the blaster. So, the blaster is your rapid fire gun. Yeah, I can see that. And that thing is... Uh... To the oh, I thought it was actual bad guy. It's uh, info bot. <laughs> Clank is going to actually think it's really Captain you Cook. Receive a reward from my head trainer. Simply make your way to the third island to complete the course. Good luck. Cork Enterprises is not responsible for sprains, broken bones, snapped tendons, bruised egos, or accidental death. And this game has a really good sense of humor to it. Like some of like the dialogue in here is hysterical. Okay then. Especially Captain Quark. Captain Quark is just one big like troll character. Well, I find the fact that he has a spring where his leg should be to be quite puzzling. And why do you think that is? Possibly an injury incurred while battling evil. This isn't the real Captain Quark, you numbskull. It's a robot. Epsy, Cap Quank thought it was actually Captain Quark. Huh. But we want to make our way to that third island because it's there that we are going to get a very, very handy gadget. Those are explosives. That we will be using for the rest of the game, actually. And we'll actually get an upgrade here in this world from Al that we saw in the infobot we got in the last world that will make platforming a lot easier as well. So lots to do in Metropolis. When I think of Ratchet & Clank, the first two worlds that come to mind are, um, I won't mention one of them because I don't want to spoil it, but Metropolis is definitely one of them. Yeah? Yeah, this is a very memorable world. Well, that comes in handy. What? So you press L1, mm -hmm. you center your vision, mm -hmm. and if you have the blaster out, actual first person mm -hmm. they don't tell you that or at least i didn't read it so that's one thing i do like about the game is there's like you have the actual ability to like the recenter where you should be looking yeah which i really think should be used more in games ratchet and clank is actually really good about that um to where like it will actually like point you like if you're turned around and you press a button, like, it'll turn your camera to where you should be going. Yeah. So, like, that's something Ratchet and Clank does really well compared to other games. Oops. And the newest game has a lot of amazing accessibility options for people like myself that are hard of seeing and don't have good reaction time. Like, you can literally set, um your controller options to a simplified version to literally where all you have to do is press like the circle button and it will automatically pr pr perform like a total action for you 
just by pressing the button. Huh. It's super cool. Like, it actually has things that'll help you grind, because grinding is a huge thing in this game, in all the games. You coward! Did you know that you have a map available to you at all times? Just press the select button to view a map of this planet. I see, uh, info text came up a little bit there. Something, I wasn't paying attention, I was I'm happy shooting. That I'm happy that they're going away, though. Yeah. Because... In the last episode, that one did not want to go away about saving. Oops. So, first impressions, what do you think about Ratchet and Clank Guy? Because this is your first time playing a game. Uh, first impression, uh, make sure you get the options or the <laughs> settings right. <laughs> make sure you have the controls not inverted. Pretty much, yeah. Duly noted. I don't know why they do that in games. It's like, hey, let's make left, right, and right, left. Well, the reason is because uh, old flight simulator games yeah. and helicopter games would invert. Uh-huh. Because... Uh, is that really the reason why? For the most part. Lots of those old Joy ones yeah. kind of did that. Huh, I didn't know that. Not, I mean, not all of them did that because, you but know. But that's, like, where the basis behind inverting controls came from. Pretty much. That's interesting. I, like, didn't, I, didn't, I really didn't know that. Because basically how it would be is if you pull to the left, you mm -hmm. go right. You pull to the right, you turn left. And that is... Gotcha. Uh, that's actually... Realistic for f the flying? Well, I'm not going to say... F I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I never flew. Right. <laughs> Uh, but I know I've driven a forklift before. Mm -hmm. It's true with a forklift. Gotcha. Uh, sorry, the steering is right. Right. But the actual, if you push it, like, like if you, you pull, pull it, it up, yeah, it, it's it down. goes down. Right. If you pull it towards you, which is more down, uh -huh. it goes up. Wow. See, I that's interesting. I'm learning something new, and I've been playing these games since I was five, six years old and never ever truly understand why they do the inverted controls. Yeah, so it just kind of comes down to what you are used to playing. A and lot probably of what games... you're used to doing at work. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't... Well, I'm just saying, like, if, like, a forklift driver was to play a game with the inverted controls, they'd have no problems. Yeah. Forklift, uh, same with, um, what is it, uh, you're mentioning helicopters. I mean, I don't know. Again, <laughs> I'm pretty sure my dad could attest to the the, the, the flight stuff, since of course he flew jets for the yeah. Air Force. But man, see, I've been playing these games since the early 2000s, and you teaching me something new, man. And over here, I'm just the uh, guy that's never played this before. <laughs> Well, hopefully you're having fun with this game because it, it's it been a huge part of my life, but more so it was a huge part of my childhood. Like, I played these games with my friends growing up. Yeah. Like, my, be my, my best friend, Mike, that I've known since second grade, we would always get the, either, always get both get the new games, or one of us would get one of the new games, and then would play it over at you know each other's house so like right. if I couldn't get the new one he would get it and then I play it at his house vice versa if he couldn't get it he played it at my house so you know this was like for me this was big because you know it goes back to the the old school way of gaming you know go over to a friend's house oh, right. and sit down and play the game together that's how I discovered uh, Borderlands right it was just my uh, I went over to a neighbor's house they had it mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, you want to make a character? Because Borderlands, you can play... Uh, yeah, you got all the different races. You can play as two different people. Yeah. Of course, you level up separately, but... Tiny Tina. Yep. These moving walls also She's actually getting her own solo game. Yeah. 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 I, I got in the tower here. Yeah, I got in the Borderlands a lot later. 
but still very good games. I played. <gasps> Did you fall? No fall damage. Woo. Yeah. I played Borderlands 2. First? First. Uh, and I. How does it go? Border... How many Borderlands are there? Okay, so you have one, two, then there's the prequel. Yep. Then there's three. And then they came out with the four. But then they have the Telltale one, which is like literally a like choose your own adventure game. Yeah. So there's like four or five of them now. So I've started on two. Mm hmm. Then. Went backwards? No, I never played one. You never Ever. played one? Okay. Uh, I started on two. I played the pre sequel because I bought the Handsome Jack. Oh, edition. Handsome Jack. Such a great villain. And it was like, okay, we got that. I have to nerd out a little bit here. Do you know who voices Handsome Jack? I feel like you've actually told me. I just can't remember. The voice of Perfect Cell from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah? Yeah. Damon Clark. Ah, uh, such a good voice actor. It sucks he retired so early. He was such a great voice actor. I mean, he's so good that literally when they did the um, the remake series, Kai, they literally called him and said, Dude, you have to come back for Cell. We will have nobody else. And here's Helga. That's Big Mama. Here's Helga. She's actually Captain Quark's personal trainer. Gotcha. What do you mean? We finished the circuit, ma'am. I should not say this because I'm going to get roasted in the comments, but why is it always that the uh, heftier, out of shape characters always train the in shape physical specimen characters? I have no idea. It's such a cliche, and it actually happens in real life, too. Like you have these coaches that have literally never worked out in their life training like these Adonises. And you're like, okay, if you can make him into that, why can't you do it yourself? Uh, that's different for him. He doesn't have that motivation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I know a lot of actors. I know I'm going over her. It's Helga. Who cares? I don't like Helga. A lot of actors, like, big one is Chris Pratt. Yeah. I'll buy a slingshot. Yeah, you want the slingshot. It's very important. Without it, you can't complete the game. Okay. And I'm not even joking. <laughs> you really can't complete the game without it. But, uh, Shut up, Helga. I hate you. I hate that you become such an important character. Congratulations on your new Gadgetron slingshot. Use it on standard versus targets like the ones nearby. So make sure you learn how to use the slingshot, because otherwise, if you try to use it and don't use it, you will fall to your death. Alright, so how do we... I got the aim. Er, now, very that. important, slingshot is not a weapon, so you will not find it in the weapons, you will find it in the gadgets. I tell you that now, because I have seen multiple people, including myself, be like, where the fuck's my slingshot? Oh, right, it's in my gadgets, because it's not a freaking weapon. So how do you use a slingshot? Um, so you have to go up to... There's going to be, like, floating balls. Um, like that, like, hover in the air. That let you, like, hook the slingshot onto them so that you can travel gotcha. far gaps. There you go, you got it. You got to hold it. Yes, you do. And if you let go too soon, you will fall to your death. But, um... Yeah, but what about Chris Pratt? Chris Pratt, um... Why are those yellow? Sorry. I don't know why those are yellow. Uh, well, Chris Pratt... He... Went from The Office... Mm -hmm. The show, everyone knows about the show. American Office... Yes. Oh, sorry, no. Sorry. Parks and Recreation. I meant Parks and Recreation. <laughs> okay, see, that makes more sense because I do remember him being in that one. Yeah. Uh, sorry. He was in Parks and Recreation and he gained... A lot of weight. Yeah, he was... He said he was about 250 to 300 pounds. Mm-hmm. For that... At that point in time in his life. And... 
he played a couple other characters being that heavy but he heard about guardians of the galaxy it's because he's star lord oh yeah he's heard about the guardians of the galaxy and basically said i want this position and his um his manager or whatever it is yeah basically said is that it here well is you had to go to big al the robot or so you, so you can get oh did you find the info bot which info bot Oh, there'll be an info bot later, but right now your two objectives are to get the slingshot, which you did, and now to go buy, find Big Al so that you can upgrade Clank. Okay. So I guess there's nothing over here. So basically, did his manager tell him, like, dude, you gotta lose weight or you're never gonna get yeah. the role? Well, his manager said you sh they are looking for someone uh, a little lighter than you. Yeah. And so he went to a personal trainer. Mm hmm. His personal trainer was in good shape. Yeah. But uh, he basically said he worked out twice a day for four days a week. Four or five days a week. Uh, and with that, he had one in the morning and one in the evening. Mm -hmm. And personal trainer had him doing all these heavy sets. Yeah. And it got him down to 200, I think, 20 pounds. So that is muscle weight. Yeah, because he shredded in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, he, he actually spent, they said... I think it was three months working out, but so hardcore workout. Yeah, like doing two workouts in a day, four times a day, a week. I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Professor, did you find Big Al? Hey, you're that robot guy. No. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> I guess that's Big but Al. But you said Professor, so I'm like, it's gotta be Big Al. Saw your infobot announcement. You were with Captain Quark. We're trying to find Captain Quark. We thought you could help us. Your logic is commendable. However, I haven't seen Captain Quark since we shot that commercial. Say, do you run on standard XP18 sister boards? Version 7.66. Back at ya. I may be able to help you out after all. How does a hell of a upgrade sound? Upgrade. He's a reoccurring now, character. He does have three toes. One of those are you foot. still focused yes! on the oh <laughs> Anyways, we need to purchase the helipack. Okay, this won't hurt a bit. I just stole my robot. Back up. Am I cool that now? doesn't look safe. <laughs> yeah. Mm, you nothing's man, ever truly safe. Welcome. When it comes to body modifications. And now we can hover and f pretty much kind of fly with the helipack upgrade to Clank. So you'll want to master that because it will help do long jumps, um, high jumps. So this is a big upgrade when it comes to platforming. Gotcha. I'm not going to jump on that, but I'll jump over So here. that's why I said we should go here first because you get two very... Oh, do you, got, do you have to hold X? Yes. Oh, it didn't say hold X. Again, probably not focusing. So if you press the thing, and, like if you crouch, yep. and then press, like you'll do a really high jump, and then just hold, and you'll kind of hover. And then if you're running, um, and you're holding down the, the, the right buttons, you can do a long jump using the helipad too. That'll help you leap across long gaps. Is that the run, double jump, and hold? Looks like it. Yeah. But this is why we needed to come here first because we get the helipack and the slingshot, which really help with world progression and exploration. 
And honestly, we kind of needed the slingshot in order to um, do uh, some of the things in the outpost where Skids is. Yeah. So it's all in all a, a good idea to come here first before you go to the other world. Boom, chicka boom, chicka boom, chicka pow. Control's feeling better now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't. I only use the look around when I'm trying to figure out where I'm aiming. Mm -hmm. Or try to turn a little bit faster. Because you can turn all the way around, but you just stare at yourself. Yeah, you know, aiming's actually not really hard in this game because it kind of locks on. Yeah. So it's actually not really hard. And I would say it's not overly hard for a blind person to play depending on their level of vision because the weapons kind of lock on to your opponents so you kind of just just have to shoot <laughs> you're gonna hit your opponent yeah so I would say as limited as things are in this game it does have some mechanics that uh, are good for a blind person the whole camera refocusing so that you're looking and your, your your vision is centered right on um, the fact that aiming isn't really that big of a deal it kind of aims for you so what you really have to worry about is just shooting your opponent so those two things like those get big applause for me as a blind gamer but of course um, in terms of exploring the world, probably would still be kind of impossible for someone with my vision. But, again, for as early as a game as this is, it, it already had some things that are good for accessibility, and they've only built upon it in the newer games. Especially right. the brand new one. So, like, you can kind of see, like, these games only got better and better in terms of their accessibility the more and more newer they got. So I can definitely applaud Ratchet and Clank for that because it didn't have to continue you know, building upon these small types of things that it already had and made them better and more inclusive for blind gamers but they did and for that I'm very thankful and applaud Insomnia. Because I feel they are one of the very few AAA game companies that are really trying to make sure they cater to the blind gamer. Again, uh, that's just that's my little soapbox. I have to always give my opinion when. Now I died. You well, you, you just fall. <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, you you just you got killed. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, because I like when you fall off the world because he screams while he's falling. <laughs> he's like, oh, and he's like, yep, you're dead. This world is so different in the remake for the PS4. Yeah? Yeah, they add like a whole like whole big thing with the with this runaway train that's kind of in this world, but they make it even more annoying, which I wasn't a big fan of. Again, I mean I, I don't wanna keep like saying stuff about the remake because it just comes off as me shitting on the remake and is as if I didn't like it which I do I really do like it because it did a lot of great things I could kill myself again almost but uh, there are I do have quite a bit of problems with what content they decided to take out and then what, what content they decided to make different but in my opinion very annoying I can't have any say on that. I don't know. Yeah, I know, I know. So 
So I think all you really need to do, Kai, is um, there's that part as you're, you know, there's the part past Big Al. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of... Yeah, once you, there's a, I think you get to an info bot at the very end, so that's, I think that's all you have left to do in this world. Gotcha. And you're good. You can't place those landmines when I shoot you, buddy. Uh, do you get the Glove of Doom in this game? I think you do. Because that's one of my favorite weapons, and I hope I'm remembering that it's in this game, right? Some of the weapons in, 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 uh, in this game are really funny. They, they, that's, that's one thing I really like. They have a lot of quirky weapons in the Ratchet & Clank series. Like, I don't think the Sheepinator is in this game, but there is a weapon in one of the games that turns your enemies into sheep. Okay. Yeah, it's freaking hilarious. I do know that the, um... Oh, we're on a train, I think. The vacuum gun is in this game. You literally get a weapon that is a vacuum cannon. Yeah. So you can absorb small enemies into it and then shoot them out as the ammo. Huh. Yep, we're on a train. Yep. So, I like the train part in this game. They give you a time limit in the remake, which is why I don't like it in the remake. Gotcha. Because time limits are never fun. I don't care what anyone says. Time limits are never fun in games. The first person who ever decided, I'm willing to put a time limit in my game. I hope they got slapped really hard by their kids that had to play their games. If they mm, almost fell off the world, try to kill a guy. Yeah, don't do that. That's the instant death. But train station. Just making your way downtown. Bing <laughs> bong. Now departing Central Station. Where'd he go? Oh, the robot. Yeah. Yeah, he flew off. So you gotta get off the station. Oh. Quick, we'll chase him down. Get over here, Infobot. I need you so that I can get further into the game. Now departing. Bing bong. Bing bong. Approaching Station A1. Alpha 1. That's the bullet train in airports. Yeah? Yeah. Infobot! Greetings, Executive Chairman Vex. It's Ted for the present, Ms. Lieutenant. My sources tell me that uh -oh, it's him again. Drug we King. must prepare this planet to be harvested for our new world. Yes, sir. As you can see, everything is... What are you doing now, Drek? Something bad? Something about cutting down trees, uh, yeah. but not knowing how to cut down trees. Yeah. Yes, sir. I won't fail. Drek is destroying yet another planet. Yeah, but if that's the kind of help he's getting, I don't think we have anything to worry about. You should not underestimate Chairman Drek. He is quite dangerous. We must find Captain Quark. Look, that lieutenant doesn't seem so tough. Let's take him out ourselves. Perhaps we can persuade the lieutenant to tell us where Drek is. <laughs> now you're talking. All right, so I think if we were to check the menu, it would say that all missions are complete. So I think that is the end of Metropolis. Let's see. Wrong thing. There we go. Uh, view missions. Complete. Yep. All right, so... What I think is in the next episode, we go to the outpost and see Skids McMark. So... Skids McMark, then. I think we should make our way back to the ship, check the vendor, see if we have enough money to maybe purchase a new weapon, and then I think that'll be good enough for another episode. Vendor. Alright, how much money we got? I should say how much bolts we got. 
1,800. We mm -hmm. need 25. Ah, uh, well, we don't have enough then. Well, we'll get more, but that is going to be it for episode dos, number two of Ratchet and Clank. We made our way through Metropolis. We got the slingshot. We upgraded Clank with his helipack, so now we can fly and hover and walk. Uh, I'll oh, fly away. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ty's getting excited about the flying, I think. Anywho, thank you so much for watching another episode of Let's Play Ratchet and Clank. If you liked anything you saw or liked anything you heard, please, if you could, leave a like on the video, a comment telling us what you enjoyed or what you didn't like, and maybe even a subscription. Otherwise, have a great day, and we'll see you next time when we play more Ratchet and Clank. Goodbye.